Orthopedic care does not necessarily mean total joint replacement as we often think, but in the event that it does, there is one rural hospital that is going above and beyond when preparing patients and rehabilitating patients before and after surgery. I'm here at Mile Bluff Medical Center and my guests will include Dr. Mike Wolf, Dr. Rick Rilling, and Dr. Jim Grinnell. From Mile Bluff Medical Center here in Mauston, Wisconsin Health starts now. Going beyond in joint replacement is our topic of conversation here today at Mile Bluff Medical Center at Wisconsin Health. And I'm joined by a great team of folks here again for the second month in a row, Dr. Mike Wolf, Dr. Rick Rilling, and Dr. Jim Grinnell. Welcome back to the program. Thanks, thank you. I see you all wore the same wardrobe as last <laughs> month. That's kind of interesting. I think I did too, actually. So. Uh, last month we talked a little bit about the orthopedic service line and the importance of providing patients with a strong overall team uh, when it comes to their care. Uh, can you remind viewers a little bit about who you are and what role you play in the orthopedic journey of patients here at Mile Bluff? Mike Wolf, we'll start, start with you. Hi, I'm Mike Wolf. I'm the director of the anesthesia services, the anesthesia department. Um, our group is intimately involved with, with the orthop orthopedic care. These guys can't do what they need to do with, without our assistance. Um, but what we try to do is individualize the care to allow that patient to get the best possible experience from the preoperative uh, visit through the anesthetic experience through, the, through the, the immediate recovery into the rehab. Uh, I, I think that's the one thing that we offer for, for the orthopedic services that's, that's pretty unique. Okay, Dr. Rilling. I'm Dr. Rick Rilling. I do general orthopedics. I've been practicing for at least 20 years now. Um, I've been here for about six months and did my training at the University of Wisconsin Hospitals and Clinics. Dr. And I'm Dr. Jim Grinnell, and I'm recently uh, here, uh, just three months now. Previously, I practiced for 36 years in Southwest Michigan, and I did my training in the Detroit area. Very good. And uh, Mike, you've been a member of the Mile Bluff team for quite a while now. So uh, can you talk about some of the positive changes you've seen in the orthopedic service line uh, that you've witnessed over the years? Well, I've been here six years. I've been in practice 30. So I've done a lot of orthopedics through the years. But in the six years that I've been here, there's been an incredible emphasis on being able to provide the care local that the patients need. Um, these guys will go into some detail about those kind of services. but. Uh, the amount of evolution that's happened in six years has been rather amazing. I mean, we have four orthopedic surgeons on staff now that are incredibly capable, all come with a plethora of experience. Um, our patients are able to get the care here that six years ago they were going elsewhere. They, mm -hmm. were, they were certainly thinking that care was best done elsewhere. We're able to do that right here. And that's not about six years. I mean, I mean, that's not a long period of time. So it's that's not. very been very rapid. And I think the the experience that you talk about with some of the, the folks that are, are coming here now, that are working here now, really speaks to the quality of organization that Mile Bluff is, I think. And it's just the fact that, you know, uh, like you said, a plethora of experience in various different settings, you know, and we've seen that that's present right here in all three of you. So I'll also say that I think between Dr. Haran and Dr. Brucker and, and Dr. Grinnell, I, I think not only we have experience, but I think all four of us have really kept up well with the new changes in orthopedics and really have brought some new things out to this area. So it's fantastic. And Dr. Rilling and Dr. Grinnell, you are you're the newbies here to, to Mile Bluff Medical Center. Can you share exactly what drew you to the organization? I I've worked at a big institution for the last 20 years and I honestly I could go on and on, but I could I honestly think that I can give better care here in a smaller place. I think the care is much more individualized um, and I can get in here what I want to get in here that I think will do the best job of treating your problem and that's not necessarily the case that where I was so and I I'm, I'm here because unfortunately uh, 
Um, the hospital that I was working at uh, had a downward trend financially, and so I needed mm -hmm. to find another institution, and I've always been in a smaller institution, and, and uh, so I was able to find uh, Mile Bluff uh, in, in Boston and uh, interviewed and enjoyed the people, and that's why I came. And I'm sure you've had other interviews too, and this is kind of the one that stuck yes, out. Yes, I so. did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm five, six hours away from home, so uh, to come here and make that decision was big for me. Wow, I bet, I bet. Mm. And I understand with the addition of you two, uh, there are some new procedures and services being offered at Mile Bluff. You kind of mentioned some of those things, um, and they're very specialized procedures. Can you each tell us about some of those and also who would be good candidates for some of these procedures? Well, for me, uh, what I brought to the institution now is I, I do anterior hip arthroplasty, total hips through a, a different approach. Um, there, um, there's a lot of controversy out there as, as to whether or not it's better long term, uh, but it's been the trend. Mm -hmm. uh, eight years ago, 5% of surgeons in this country were doing anterior approach, now 40% do. And it's my understanding that uh, uh, that skill set is something that is not particularly uh, anywhere nearby uh, where people can now have that anterior hip done. But I uh, also uh, do a kinematically aligned uh, knees with a medial pivot type of knee. That's a, a little bit different. I do partial knees and I think uh, Rick's probably done some in his career, but I, I, I probably do about 10% of those. And I do endoscopic carpal ligament releases, which is a, a faster way to recover from uh, carpal tunnel surgery. Lots of big words in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think in, in going right off of what Jim's talking about, he's a, a specialist in doing anterior hip replacements. And I've actually, I'm a specialist in hip arthroscopy, which is a relatively new procedure that you may have seen some of the, the athletes you've heard, of, oh, so-and-so is out and they've had their hip scoped. And so I think that follows right with, you know, I can scope a hip and possibly keep you from getting your joint replaced quite as fast. And then if you need it replaced, we have the options of, you know, a couple of us can go do the traditional posterior approach, Jim can go anterior, and it just shows you how we can work together and, and bring a variety of different procedures here. Shoulders are the same way. I think, you know, Jim and I can both treat anything you can treat in a shoulder arthroscopically. We can even do procedures where if, if your cuff is not repairable, we can help do something shorter replacing your joint to give you decent function and help the joint not wear out. And, and then if you need a replacement, all three of us, um, I, all four of us actually, can do reverse shoulder replacements, which are some of the newer joint replacements and mm. in, in shoulder replacements. So I think we have a good team that can get you any answer out here that you need. So We gotta take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about some of the uh, new and recent procedures here offered at Mile Bluff Medical Center. Don't go away, there's more Wisconsin Health after the break. We've been discussing going above and beyond when it comes to orthopedic care here at Mile Bluff Medical Center. And in our last segment, we, you guys mentioned um, some specific procedures that are kind of new to Mile Bluff. And Dr. Grinnell, you had a couple of, uh, I guess, tongue twisters for the layperson. I wanna kind of go into, some of them just sounded fascinating to me. And so I wanna uh, ask you to maybe unpack those a little bit. One was endoscopic carpal ligament release. So what exactly is that and what would be the issue that would lead somebody to needing a procedure like that? Well, that procedure is done for carpal tunnel syndrome and that's a very okay. common disorder. Uh, people who wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning with numbness or uh, tingling in their hands mm -hmm. or uh, maybe job related uh, numbness and tingling and pain. And so carpal tunnel surgery has been around a long time and you can do it uh, through an incision on one's palm uh, or endoscopically there's an incision that's usually about one centimeter um, three uh, eighths of an inch on, on the wrist and then you insert a small instrument under the, uh, the ligament, identify the end of the ligament, deploy a little tiny knife and then cut the ligament and you're done two stitches. The advantages, I mean you're cutting the ligament no matter what you're doing, the advantages are all front loaded. Uh, it's a, a early return to, to better grip strength, early return to work, early return to function. Um, and that's really at the heart of a lot of the, uh, even the arthroscopic procedures we do. Uh, we had talked about anterior hip arthroplasty. Arthroplasty is just a term that means total, total joint. Okay. Um, and the anterior hip is uh, uh, going to the front of the hip as opposed to the back of the hip uh, to, to replace the uh, joints. And again, everything's front loaded. Um, 
The uh, CMS, which is our, our governing uh, uh, governmental board that determines uh, what, uh, who, what Medicare is going to pay for, mm -hmm. um, has recently approved uh, joint replacement for an outpatient procedure. So uh, people who have this procedure, um, if the selection is right, can go home the same day or the following morning. Uh, their, their overall recovery is faster. Uh, usually they get rid of their ambulatory aids such as walkers, crutches, canes, an average of two to three weeks sooner and they return to work on an average of a month later depending on the nature of their job. So there's less pain, faster recovery, less hospitalization um, and uh, I, I've been doing it now for eight years and, and I'll never go back doing it the other way. It's, it's really fascinating. So again, you know, multiple ways to uh, reach the same end, but obviously this is offers a better recovery time for patients, yes. which is obviously the outcome that we, we want. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about reverse shoulder replacement. Uh, Dr. Rilling, you mentioned that all four of you are uh, qualified to do that. So what exactly is that and what would lead someone to need reverse shoulder replacement? Well, you usually you end up replacing a joint because it wears out. Mm -hmm. and. There's two ways your shoulder can wear out. It can wear out where your rotator cuff still works or it can wear out where your rotator cuff is not repairable and doesn't work. Um, I don't know, I'm sure Jim will tell you the same thing. We, when we had a, a shoulder where the cuff was not repairable and didn't work, we used to put these big headed half a shoulder joint replacements in and they wouldn't, people wouldn't hurt but they also couldn't move their shoulder much. And so um, this is like uh, basically a new, a relatively new joint replacement over really about the last five years that really takes advantage of, well actually you, you actually reverse the ball in the socket on the shoulder and it makes up for not having a rotator cuff biomechanically in your shoulder. Um, I know Dr. Hans, a uh, specialist in this, I know Jim does it as well, I believe Dr. Brucker does it. Dr. Brucker just does a lot of the trauma here. He's really good at it. And a lot of those cases where you have a broken shoulder and, and Dr. Brucker, he's, I've seen some shoulders that he's put together that I can't believe he's got the way it has, or he's put together the way he has. And he just does a great job with some of that stuff. But you know, sometimes you, know, you can do a good job and it can still hurt and the cuff may not be there and you need to go to reverse. And, and uh, you know, he'd be a great guy to do that or any of us, so. Fantastic. So amazing. Uh, Mike, I also know that you are offering new procedures for individuals with knee pain. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, we're presently doing radiofrequency ablation. Okay. And that, uh, the premise there is that there are sensory nerves that go to the knee um, that can be relatively easily numbed and if that diagnostic proves true, we can go forward and, and ablate those nerves for a period of time. Nerves, nerves will come back to life after some time, mm -hmm. um, ideally at, at a year. Some of these patients that are coming, coming in uh, as candidates for total knee arthroplasty aren't good surgical candidates. They're good, mm -hmm. they're, good, they're good candidates for surgery and these guys are great surgeons to do it, but it's that preparation time that they need. Right. We can offer that as a service to help bridge that to okay. get them there, to get, give them more function and, and much greater pain control. So it's a procedure we've been getting really great results on and relatively unique to the area. And I'll just say too, it's so nice to have that available here. I mean, in, in a bigger place, you think someone, I don't, I don't even know if they have it available because I've not seen it available besides here, but then you have to make an appointment with the pain management people. Well, it takes a month to get in there. I mean, I can get my guys into Mike within the week to have that procedure done and it's just nice to be in a smaller place where that stuff is available and, and we can get it to the patients quickly. And to have that option like is, if you mentioned I think in our, our previous program that you know sometimes there is a, a patient who is a good candidate for surgery but maybe has some comorbidities that need to be managed before that can happen and so um, the expectation prior to having uh, that option, Mike, would be that they just have to kind of live with that pain and, and take care of this comorbidity. Well, now they can have a little bit more time and, and be able to focus on uh, right. dealing with I can't tell you how bad it feels to tell somebody that you know they hurt like crazy, that you can't do anything to help them until they can drop 50 pounds. Right. And having something like this available just makes you feel a little bit better as they walk out the door. It is. It's a bad feeling when you're telling someone that you know is really hurting to, that they got to wait. 
So, so would you say that those are kind of the primary candidates for a procedure, like the radio frequency ablation people who maybe are candidates for surgery but just need some time to take care of some things and prepare for that surgery? Right. The, the majority of the patients that we've been seeing are those patients that are hopeful to get their arthroplasty done, but their diabetes is not under well control. They continue smoking. We're looking for smoking cessation. Mm -hmm. So to give them time, we do that. We do have some patients that do have arthroplasty done or have had arthroplasty done in other locations. They're still having chronic pain. We can help with that too. Excellent. I might ask you for some success stories after the break here. We'll come back to Best of Wisconsin Health here at Mile Bluff after the break. Stick around. Going beyond in joint replacement is our topic of conversation here today at Mile Bluff Medical Center. And uh, Mike, before the break, you talked a little bit about radio frequency ablation and how this is a way to uh, manage, uh, help somebody manage their pain for a, a period of time while they can prepare for surgery. I'm wondering if you have any success stories to share about that. We do. Uh, we've, we've had multiple patients come through, come through the program already. Um, one of Dr. Rilling's patients who is, he's got his mindset that he's going to get there. Mm -hmm. he's, he, he knows he wants to lose some weight, he continues to be a smoker, um, he's working hard at that. That's not something that happens in a day or two. Right. So he came to us, um, had diagnostic procedure done that went great. We did the radio frequency ablation. He called it a, a life-altering process. I mean, wow. he's doing things that he hasn't done in years. And incidentally, since his radio frequency ablation has now lost 10 pounds, so we've allowed him to have improved function to be able to continue on that march toward being able to be a great candidate for surgery. I suppose if somebody is in constant pain and asking them to drop you know, a certain amount of weight is probably a huge challenge if they're having a hard time moving. Incredibly yeah. difficult. Yeah. It really sounds like Mile Bluff is really going above and beyond when it comes to orthopedic care. Uh, what else, is there anything else that you feel would be important for patients to know? I just think it's important to know that, that with the four of us here, you can <clears throat> get almost anything that they can do at bigger places further away. I could think you can get it done here. And I think we're all the mindset that, you know, we're going to try and treat you as conservatively as we can and that starts with some of the facilities here like getting the right images, getting it as fast as we can so you know what's going on, using the therapy services here, using Mike when we can um, and his team and uh, you know even when you operate you try and operate conservatively. Joint replacement is the last option and you can you can get all this done here with the four of us here now. So That's fantastic. What about uh, rehabilitation services? You guys offer, I guess, would it be considered inpatient rehabilitation services where they're kind of being rehabbed here on site? Yeah, I mean, uh, their, their rehab services here are awesome. I, they, the therapists here are top notch. You know, when I first got here, they're, they didn't have enough staff and, and now they're ramped up and they get people in right away. They have some of the, the therapy results, they've there's been a lot of patients that I know have gotten the right therapy and, and avoided surgery that way, so. You know, we have patients that, 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 that live in a, an entire spectrum. Dr. Grinnell talks about the patients that might be road ready the next day after surgery. Mm -hmm. We do have those elderly patients who maybe live a little bit more remotely. They need some, they need some additional care. Mm -hmm. We have the ability right here to continue care in a short-term rehab uh, process. We have a facility right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It's set up. The same rehab folk are here. We have the same support personnel here. It's not attached to the hospital. More like a hotel experience with all the extra support. Um, for some patients, that individualized care really necessary and does a really great job for them. I love staying in hotels. You've, you've got me sold. <laughs> so that's where I'm coming when I get into, to get my knee replaced. So. Um, I want to mention also briefly, and we've actually done entire, an entire show on this, I think, in the past, but you have a, a joint camp here to help patients prepare for having, you know, in the event that they need to have that total joint replacement. Can you just give us a brief overview of what's involved in that joint camp? The joint, the, 
Well, right. I, my, my experience with Joint Camp is, is an, it's another educational opportunity. The mm -hmm. education starts from the time that the patient meets with you in your office. Um, and what you try to do is get the entire organization to row the boat in the same direction, depending on what you're doing. Uh, so after they meet with you, then they go to the Joint Camp where they will meet with a therapist, they'll meet with the anesthesia department, they'll meet with a representative from the uh, post-op uh, area in, in the on the floor so you can get an understanding of what you're going to experience when the surgery is done. You'll meet with somebody from surgery so you can understand what the surgical experience is going to be like. Um, and then you get a follow-up visit, of course, uh, uh, with the patient. So then when you do the procedure, the patient is educated enough to, with their own procedures that they can help take ownership of that process. Taking ownership of one's care is something that is very important. Uh, for a person's health. You also mentioned that uh, the fact that uh, patients can self-refer or call to make an appointment on their own. Uh, who is an ideal candidate for many of the services that you offer? And we've touched on that a little bit. Can we just kind of recap that a little? <laughs> There's so many, I suppose. Yeah. So many different. I mean, we've talked about it being kind of an individual case-by-case -case thing. Well, as, as it pertains to joint replacement, I mean, the, the ideal candidate would be somebody who has a, an ideal weight, has none of the comorbidities, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, in, the, in their 60s, is highly motivated, mm -hmm. and they're bone-on-bone, -bone, whatever the, the joint problem. Now, that's not the kind of person that we typically see sure. um, in, in reality. But uh, part of the, the coaching process and the educational process is to try to help them understand what their role is in their own care and uh, what their comorbidities may be, how they can alter them. Uh, so that you can go to it, uh, go through with it as a team, the patient and you as a surgeon, and the BioBluff team as a whole. I think as far as who could refer themselves to us, I think anybody that's got a, a problem that just they they've lived with for a while and they haven't found the answer to, just get another head involved. You know, we're very happy to see you and see if we can help. So. Closing thoughts, anything that uh, you feel like maybe we didn't touch on that would be important for someone to know? I, I actually have a couple things. Uh, sure. One uh, the topic that didn't come up is osteoporosis. And uh, in terms of uh, an orthopedic surgeon, I mean, the, that typically comes into the purview of the family doc, but sometimes uh, we'll see somebody with a wrist fracture, hip fracture, shoulder fracture, some other type of osteoporosis related fracture, and we're the first person to see them and uh, need to engage that individual in, in, in the care of that. Uh, and the other uh, issue that um, I happen to know has been a little bit uh, of, of, of something to talk about here is that I'm the only uh, full-time orthopedic surgeon here, but what Dr. Rilling and I coming here have been able to uh, afford the institution now is much better coverage in our emergency room. So now people mm -hmm. in the community, when they've fallen down, they've hurt themselves, they need an orthopedic uh, uh, consultation uh, that they're, they just didn't expect having to happen, they can go to the emergency room. and. Uh, 99.9% .9 of the time, expect to be able to have first-hand discussion through the ER doctor with an orthopedic surgeon, whereas before uh, there were a lot of referrals going elsewhere. Gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for your time and your expertise today. It's been great. Thank you. Thank More you. Wisconsin thank you. Health coming up after the break. Stick around. That's our show. Thank you so much for joining us here today. If you or someone you know is suffering from any of the conditions mentioned in today's program, be sure to give a call to the number on your screen or get in touch with your primary care provider. From all of us here at Best of Wisconsin Health and Mile Bluff, this is Justin Riley reminding you to live longer, live better. We'll see you next time.